Hello, amazing parents. Does your child slump down when you place them in sitting on the couch? Maybe they're still learning head control. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple movement that you can explore with your child to help them not only with better head control, but also independent sitting. Hi, I'm Jen. I'm an Anat Danielle Method practitioner, and I show parents just like you how to use brain-based movements right at home to help your child with a disability or neurodiversity reach their next milestone. I'm gonna show you gentle, respectful movements that access the potential of your child's brain instead of just relying on muscle strength. So if you place your child on the couch or in somebody's lap and they end up slouching all the way down, it simply means that their brain doesn't have all of the information it needs to organize and coordinate their entire bodies for independent sitting or head control. So I'm gonna show you a few simple movements that you can do to start filling in those missing gaps for your child. Independent sitting and head control relies on our brain to be able to coordinate our head to be over top of our spine, to be over top of our pelvis. So these movements that we're gonna dive into are going to help your child's brain collect that experience of having their head and their spine and their pelvis work together. So the next time your child is sitting in your lap like this, maybe you're on the couch, maybe you're at the kitchen table, you can take a few extra seconds and give these movements a try. So first of all, most of our kids who don't have head control yet or are not independently sitting usually are pretty uncomfortable in this position here, legs straight out. So the first thing I like to do is shift them over to one of my legs and have their legs split apart like this. And this just gives the pelvis a little bit more freedom to move and to roll. So in this position with them straddling one of your legs, you have a lot of options of where to place your hand and help guide and support their body to explore their head moving over top of their pelvis in different variations. I like to have one hand gently over top of the forehead. Just for those kids who don't have head control yet, if you move too far forward, the head over top of the pelvis, sometimes the head will flop or fall forward and that is not a safe learning experience for their brain. So you wanna really make sure you're keeping your child supported and safe. So one hand on the forehead like this, gentle, soft, and the other hand, I'll show you a few different variations. Where you place this hand can give your child's brain different information that they can use to collect and organize themselves to have more options in coordinating how their head moves over top of their pelvis. So let's start with the hand on their pelvis. So I'm gonna just gently, lightly have my fingers kind of hugging the shape of the pelvis. So my, my fingers are on the, the pelvis bone here, just like I'm having my placing my hands on my hip here. I'm gonna do that for this little one here and a soft, gentle hand on the forehead, just so their head doesn't flop over. And in this position here, I'm gonna bring my head over top forward over my pelvis. So my head is moving forward over my pelvis and watch what happens to my child here. Guess what? Her head is moving forward over top of her pelvis too. Now, because I have a hand down here on her pelvis, I'm actually highlighting to her brain that her pelvis has the potential to roll like a ball forward and backwards, forward, and backwards. Now notice I'm going really, really slow because I'm trying to give her brain the opportunity to notice differences, to collect this experience of having her, her head move forward over top of her pelvis. If I go really fast, her brain just simply doesn't have enough time to pay attention to what's happening. So I'm going to roll my own pelvis forward, my own head forward over top of my pelvis. And in doing that, I'm being supportive to her and she's getting the experience too of what it feels like to shift her head weight over top of her pelvis. Now I can add in a little bit of variation too, which also helps the brain. I'm gonna move my own head over top of my pelvis, but a little bit to the left and then a little bit to the right. And these tiny little pieces of variation is so important for their brains to collect that experience. So then they can have lots of option in independent sitting. It's like building a database full of rich experience for their brains to use in 
head control in independent sitting when they come up into standing and walking. And another fun variation can be where you place this hand. So the first time we brought the head over, forward, over the pelvis in this position with the hand shining a spotlight on the pelvis, but we can also do that with our hand say on the sternum. So I'm going to use soft, gentle hands to shine a spotlight on her sternum here, her front of her chest here, and see what happens if there's a change. And this will give her brain a different variation of movement to explore. And you can experiment with this on your own as well. So I'm going to actually place my hand on my sternum here, my chest here. And as I move my head forward over top of my pelvis, with my hand on my sternum, I can actually feel my sternum leading the movement. I'm going to go a little bit to my left and now I'm going to go a little bit to my right. And all of a sudden my brain is hyper aware of where my chest, where my sternum is going. And it's actually leading the movement, which is quite interesting. Very different from when I had my hand on my pelvis. So when my hands on my pelvis, I can really feel my pelvis rolling forward because it's shining a spotlight. My touch is shining a spotlight to my brain of these different body parts. And the more body parts my brain is aware of, it can coordinate and organize all of these different body parts in functional movement. So now I'm going to give my child that experience, that highlight to her brain of a gentle hand shining a spotlight on her sternum here as I bring her head over her pelvis a little bit more. I'm shining a spotlight on her sternum a little bit and I'm going to feel and notice a difference. I'm going to go a little bit to the left the next time and then I'm going to go a little bit to the right the next time. I can even do little circles. And if you notice, I'm doing the same motion myself. I'm internally feeling this experience and it's transferring to my child as well. This is a much different experience than this. Which experience do you think her brain is getting the most out of? Gentle, respectful movements that explore the natural shifting of weight and allowing her brain to collect these experiences so it can organize itself for better head control and independent sitting versus just passively doing something to my child. So hopefully these simple movements are something that you will try. Let me know if you try them down below and what happened after, what changes did you notice in yourself or in your child? So keep exploring slow, gentle, respectful movements and we will see you in the next video. Bye.